In this lesson, we are going to add Stripe payments. Stripe is a very popular online payment system. Before getting started with code, I want to briefly highlight a few important points so that everybody stays on the same page. First of all, Stripe is not PayPal. And what is most important, that there is no such thing as Stripe for PayPal. They are both equally important, which means there is a significant number of users of both systems. And if you plan to add payments to your Django project, you should consider both of them. If compared to PayPal, Stripe is a relatively new player. Stripe started in 2010, while PayPal is out there from 1998. One selling point for Stripe is that Stripe was software developer oriented from day number one, which means that we developers will have great time working with it. So let's start. In video store application I already did some UI changes, and I started with this menu. This menu item will be rendered as upgrade to Pro if user hasn't paid yet. Here is a template code for this menu item. As we learned in previous lesson, the decision making point is a function called has paid, which is defined on user model. So at this point, this part will be rendered, which is basically this view called upgrade. Upgrade view looks like this. It is very important to understand that so far Video Store application does not use any Stripe API. The real action starts when the user clicks this button. This whole thing is a post form, which is rendered here, and the view which will process this form is called payment method. The payment method view will receive three parameters. First one will be the plan, which is either monthly or annual. Second parameter will indicate if user chooses for automatic renewal. And third parameter will be the payment method, either card or PayPal. Here is the summary of what is implemented so far. When user clicks on upgrade, upgrade view will render this form. In this form, user chooses a plan, a payment method, and either if he wants or no to have automatic renewal. When user clicks continue via a post request, he is redirected to this view, payment method. Payment method view receives three variables. Plan, which is either A from annual or M from monthly, automatic, which can be either on or off, and payment method, which will be either card or PayPal. In this lesson, we will take care only of the situation where payment method is card. At this moment, payment method view is empty. Here, we will need to initialize Stripe. So let's take care now of Stripe. Here I'm in Stripe dashboard. And in this select menu here, you can create as many stores as you want. So for now, let's create a new store. I'll call it Video Store Demo. First thing to do after creating a store, we need to activate it. So I will choose this menu Activate your account and I will fill in quickly this form. After I filled in form, and submitted it, my video store demo is activated. And here you can see that we can switch between testing data and live data. For this demo, we are going to switch to test data. And here you can see I have my publishable key and secret key. In video store application, there are two plans, annual and monthly. There are two plans of one product, product being the subscription service. Here in Stripe dashboard, I will enter information about those two plans. Remember that this is sandbox or testing account. So here in products, I will enter a new product. And now I will add a pricing plan for video store subscription service. This is the name of the product I just created. So first plan is monthly and it will be a recurring quantity. I will charge in USD dollars and the price per unit, unit being monthly period, will be 19, 1995. And now you can see here a product ID. We'll use this ID a little bit later in code. For now, let's add one more plan, the annual plan. Now I will install official Stripe Python module. Official Stripe Python module is this one. Notice that in this lesson I won't use any third-party plugins. And the last step in terms of preparation 
is defining these four constants in settings file. So here I define secret key, publishable key, plan monthly and plan annual. Publishable and secret key, you get them from Stripe dashboard. The plan monthly and annual, you get them from products, the product that we defined, and here are these two constants. And at this point, we are ready to fill in code for payment method view. So first of all, I will extract all parameters from request object. And I will use a require post decorator to double check that this method comes from a post form. In this lesson, we will take care only of the case where payment method is card. Now we need to take care of this template, which doesn't exist yet, this context, and we need also to import this one. I created a class called videos plan. This class is sort of dictionary. Giving a plan as letter M or A, it will return you uh, detailed information about that plan. The definition of video plan class is really not important. We will come back to it towards the end of this screencast. What is really important is that first thing we need to instantiate a so-called payment intent object. And while creating payment intent, we need to specify amount and currency. Let me import Stripe. When making any Stripe API call, we need to specify API key. And I will define API key at the top of this file. The payment intent object will contain a temporary secret key which we will use in this view to render the card. Notice that this secret key has nothing to do with publishable or secret key which we declared earlier. This one is used for client side for JavaScript to render the card. Another thing that we will use during the rendering of a client side card is publishable key. So let's add it to the context. While creating payment intent instance, I need to specify payment method type. For a while, I will ignore so-called strong customer authentication or 3D secure. We will make sure first that the card is displayed on the client side and that the basic payment works. And afterwards, we will take care of 3D secure or strong customer authentication. Let's now take care of card template. In templates payments folder, I will create a file called card HTML. And this is the skeleton of card HTML. Notice that it has an empty for now form. To render the card and perform client side basic validation, I will use JavaScript code provided by Stripe. This is the latest version of JavaScript client provided by Stripe. And I will use this library to define this function which will take care of card rendering and validation. Notice that this function receives as argument Stripe publishable key and customer email. By the way, I need to include customer email in the contact. Now I'll create card.js. Let me first add this variable to the context so that I won't forget about it. Now I will create an instance of JavaScript Stripe object. This is Stripe's publishable key, which we passed via Django context. JavaScript Stripe library uses so-called elements to manipulate DOM objects. Now I will create a JavaScript object called card and style it. The card object is created via elements. And finally, we need to associate this JavaScript card object with a, a DOM element. This means that DOM must contain an, uh, a div with this ID. So let's create it. And because we're already here, let's add two more div elements, one where errors will be displayed and another one for submit button. So at this point, if user clicks continue button in upgrade view, 
he will see some sort of card input. Let's check if everything works so far. What you see here, this little card and placeholder here was added by Stripe JavaScript and we don't have any errors, which is pretty good. Before we continue, I want to remind you that I don't publish all screencasts on YouTube. Some screencasts are pro, like this ones, and pro lessons are available only on DjangoLessons.com. Until June 2020, all lessons are for free and you need only to sign up to get access to them. Next, I will attach an event listener to the card element. This function will be called whenever user types in something in the card elements. And if there will be validation errors, the error messages will be attached to card errors div element, the one that we added here. Now if I'll type something into the card element, error messages will be displayed, which is pretty cool. The next part is a little bit tricky. What we want to do is to catch submit event and from card object to create so-called payment method object. Besides creating payment method object, we need to pass its ID to the Django side. Django will use payment method ID to initiate the payment. So let's dig it step by step. So first I added a submit event listener to our payment form. And the next step, using Stripe.js, I'll create from the card object a token. This token object is used to pass information between client side and server side. And if there are no errors, we will reach this place where I will add create payment method. And now we reach the most important part of entire JavaScript code. Here we create the payment method object. The payment method object is created from the card object which contains user input and it uses customer email to identify this payment method object with a customer. Now only one thing is left, is to pass ID of payment method, which is this object, to the Django side. We will do it here by creating a hidden input element and attaching it to the existing form, like this. And after creating payment method and attaching it to the form, we are ready to submit form. This part will submit the form with payment method ID to the Django side. On Django side, there's still no view which will handle this form. So let's take care of this part and then we'll check if everything works so far. Behind the scene I tested this code and there were a couple of errors. One of them is that I need to rename this ID to something else, like for example submit button. Because plain submit will interfere with this code. Another thing that I added is the CSRF token. And the last part of the code which I needed to fix is instead of payment method result.id, here should be payment method result.payment method.id. This card number is a special one and it refers to the test card and this test card is an US card. So if I'll submit now, there were no errors on JavaScript side. And in dashboard, you see here that a payment intent was submitted. It is still incomplete because obviously we are not done yet. Now let's have a look at this payment intents. Notice that in event and logs section, it tells very explicitly what is the problem. The payment intent requires a payment method. Set an existing payment method on a payment intent. So what I will do now, here in payment method view, I will pass to the context the payment intent ID. And now in this form I can add a hidden element with the name payment intent ID and with the value of payment intent ID so that when I submit this form, this payment ID together with this payment with payment method ID will be passed along to the next view, to this one here. I remind you that card view is the view that handles this form. So now when I submit a payment and we have a look at the post card request, 
you can see here that there are two important parameters passed. One of them is payment intent ID and another one is payment method ID. So far we only initiated the payment flow. There is no payment yet, but at this point armed with payment method ID and payment intent ID we are ready to submit a payment. Next lesson we will continue from this point. In the next screencast we will learn how to submit a payment, how to create a subscription and the most important part we will discuss strong customer authentication. I hope you enjoyed this lesson. Thanks for watching.